All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to a new day. Uh, let's just begin this time with a word of prayer. Then we'll get into our teaching sessions. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for yet another opportunity to come and together and study and learn your word. Lord, even as we learn about the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit, we thank you, Lord, that you are bringing clarity into our hearts, into our spirit, Lord. And we will learn that we will, Lord, apply everything that we study, O oh God, and use us, Lord, for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So, last class, we looked at chapter 10. We're looking at the gifts of the Spirit. So, uh, firstly, we looked at the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and then we also looked at the proper foundation for releasing these gifts, right? how the gifts are manifested. Uh, as believers, we all flow in the, we can flow in these gifts. Uh, uh, then we looked at uh, stepping into the ministry gifts. Right, tapping into the gifts as well, right? How do we, how do I tap into the gifts that God, that the Holy Spirit is placed uh, in my life? So I stir up the gifts. I pray in the Spirit, worship, fasting, uh, walking in faith, building ourselves in faith. And we also look briefly at the hindrances to moving in the gifts of the Spirit. So a lack of teaching, neglect, fear of failure, fear of man, need of affirmation. Uh, then very importantly, we looked at releasing prophecies. So one important point we looked at was prophecy is God speaking to man through man. And um, oh, all of us can prophesy, but we prophesy in part, but all prophecy must be judged. Um, now, we also talked about you know not adding our own masala, so to speak. Uh, to the prophecy, but just to be clear, if, if God is giving you a simple word, just leave it at that, give the simple word and be done with it. Right? Uh, how we deliver the message is in our control. Understand that the value of wisdom is greater than revelation. So we may have the gifts, we may have the skills uh, which we need, but we need the wisdom of God to be able to release the gifts in a, in a proper way, right? So we looked at different aspects uh, in giving and receiving prophecy. We talked about revelation. How do we present the prophecy, the prophetic word that God gives you, the presentation. Right? Don't start off the prophecy saying, see, actually, you know, you are nothing. So that's why God is speaking only to me. No. We, we learn how to present the, the message. Then interpretation, understanding, how do I apply the application, uh, the prophetic word into my life, or how do I help the other person apply the prophetic word? And then you get a confirmation. You ask God for a confirmation, and you say, God, if this is what you want me to do, speak to me, minister to me. Um, Again, the Holy Spirit will minister to us in different ways. A uh, small witness, a flash of information, a knowing insight, pictures, words, um, uh, sentences, or even physical sensations. Right. So we stopped here. Uh, again, very important. Don't miss the supernatural while looking for the spectacular. Right? Uh, see, the Holy Spirit will do spectacular things. But don't expect spectacular things always. Sometimes it can be very, very simple. But our role in giving the prophetic word or flowing in the gifts of the Spirit is to walk in obedience, to walk in faith. right? Uh, and then we go to the next portion. We're going to talk about how do we do all of this right? when we're talking about prophecies, when we're talking about we how do i move in this how do i grow how do i improve right uh, the bible exhorts us he says we are growing from strength to strength from glory to glory we should never be in a place of satisfaction we should always desire more we must always pursue more no matter how 
how much how how many gifts we flow in it doesn't matter how highly anointed we are we must always look to grow so few points here how do we you know prophesy how do we flow in the gifts of the spirit in the right way number one by prayer the more you pray the more you hear from god and the more details you hear especially in the prophetic or the word of knowledge in right the more you pray the more you hear from god the more i talk to a person the more i recognize his voice the more i'm familiar with his voice the more i will you know listen to him the more details i will get from him same thing with the holy spirit the more i pray the more i spend time in god's presence the more i will hear from god and one primary way that the word what the lord speaks to us is through our our prayer and reading of the word primary way reading of the word right so we can be praying we can be reading the word of god god can just bring in a flash of information into our spirit right so let prayer be the focus of all these gifts unfortunately i would say fortunately or unfortunately uh, you know gifts cannot be bought i cannot say okay you know god i will do this for one year you give me the gifts it doesn't work that way the more i pray the more i hear from god the more details the god begins to reveal in my life two is fasting the new wine skin does not come without fasting and prayer jesus said it so beautifully you don't put old wine into new wine skin because if you do so the old wine is just going to break that wine skin the new wine skin and it's going to tear apart nor do you put new wine into old wine skins why because the new wine needs to ferment and as it's fermenting it can tear away the old uh, wine skin so remember as believers we have a new spirit a new spirit inside us we must come out of that old wine skin the new wine skin does not come without fasting and prayer now i know that we all you know we may be working we have college we are doing things we may be busy but some of the things that we can apply is maybe do a partial fast right maybe you know okay i'll skip my breakfast i'll spend some time um you know just reading god's word or spending additional time in prayer or i'll skip my lunch or my dinner just skipping a meal right uh and then eventually you get into this place of spending more time in fasting praying and uh, that way the old self is removed new wine wine skin is formed and the holy spirit begins to pour out into our lives thirdly self restraint the ability to restrain our emotion opinion and debate the ability to hold a word until it's the time to release it self restraint now listen for example if i go to if we go to a village and do ministry i we were doing village ministry now the moment i go there and i say okay after prayer i say you know what i uh, here's what i feel i'm getting a prophetic word and i say i see that many of you are going through financial problems now 9 out of 10 will be going through financial problems right so when i say these kind of things i'm looking at the people I'm, and i'm basing my prophetic a prophetic word on opinions that i have in my mind right so it's an opinion in my mind it's not something that i i know it's not something that god has spoken to me but it's an opinion and when these kind of thoughts come to my mind i need to exercise self restraint i need to tell myself this 
may not be from God. So in, in times when you're unsure, wait, hold yourself back and say, okay, God, give me a little more in detail. What is it? And you say financial difficulty. Is there somebody here who, is there something in particular that you want me to speak to? Or someone in particular that this word can be effective to? Right? So knowing when to speak and when to release the word. Right? Self-restraint. For example, if I go to a house where, uh, where I know that there is a lot of problem, Right? And I'm praying and I say, then suddenly I go and I say, you know, there's a lot of witchcraft that is done uh, uh, against this family. Now, I know the family has problems. I can very easily say, oh, there's a lot of witchcraft done and call it a prophetic word. It is not a prophetic word. A prophetic word is from God. And so I would need to restrain my thoughts, my emotions, my opinions, my debates that is going on in my mind and say, God, is this word from you? Is this what you want me to speak at this moment? Sometimes God may say nothing. That's all right. Self-restraint. It's, it's an ability that you and I learn in leadership. Very important self-restraint to, to to tell ourselves no learn to speak only when you when when there is when there is a need to speak okay now again even as we exercise self-restraint there will be times there'll be the stirring very strong in our spirit and then we give the prophetic word so that's that's all right but at times we may not feel a certain we may just give a prophetic word now that word may not have been a prophetic word. It's not going to help the other person. It's just a word that's spoken. That's it. The other person will say, I, it didn't affect me at all. But if it's a true prophetic word from God, that word will speak into their lives. And there will be a change in their life. That's for sure. Right? So exercising self-restraint is a gift that we need to develop. Fourthly, increasing in faith. Your, you prophesy in accordance to your faith. Romans 12 and verse 6. Can anyone read that verse? Romans chapter 12 and verse 6. Can someone read that, please? Romans 12, 6. Go ahead. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. And if it's prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to your faith. Right now, the more we grow stronger, right? Faith comes by hearing, and hearing the word of God. The more we grow in our walk with the Lord, uh, faith is built. Right. And then we begin to prophesy, we begin to have faith. There's a gift of faith that the Lord releases into our hearts. And so we prophesy in accordance to our faith. Fifthly, character. Now, this is, I would say, this is one of the most important aspects when it comes to flowing in the gifts of the Spirit. Build trust with people. The more trust you have among the people, the greater liberty and faith you can exercise to deliver the prophetic word. Build trust with people. Now, especially, you know, if it's within a church setting, it's very easy to build trust, right? But what about times when you are going to other places, right? Uh, other places and ministering there. People watch how you, how you portray yourself, your character, 
uh, speaks a lot, right? What is character? Your character is who you are when nobody is watching you. Because you know, we can be somebody when people are watching. We can be somebody when nobody is watching. Right? We can be praise the Lord when people are watching. We can be something else when nobody is watching. Our character is who you are when nobody is watching. Here's a, here's a good uh, sentence that I read. Your gifts and talents will take you up the ladder. Take you to places where people will see, recognize. You're applauded. People clap for you. But it's your character that keeps you there. Bad character, you fall down very quickly. So build the trust of the people that you're ministering to. Right? And when you build trust, greater the liberty. For example, you know, supernatural hour is something that you have each day. Now, as students, you all, you know, there's some sense of trust and liberty there. So you can feel free to step out and give a prophetic word. That's what we want to do, right? That's what we want our, all of us to do. Uh, give a word of knowledge or a, or, or a gift, you know, just ex express the gifts that God has uh, placed in your life. Why? Because there's a place of trust, there's a place where, where there's liberty, uh, nobody's judging one another, uh, and then you can exercise the prophetic word. Now, just because it's a place of trust, don't take advantage of people. We need to, you know, we need to be very careful now, especially, you know, some places that I've gone to and ministered to, you know, they, they trust us. Complete 100% trust, especially in towns and villages when we go to do ministry. Villages, people just have complete 100% trust on the person who's preaching. Now, don't take advantage of it. We need to be very careful, uh, be very wise on how we exercise our faith and deliver the prophetic word. Six, accurate doctrine. Keep, keep yourself out of error. In anything that you preach and teach, let it be in line with God's word. If a prophetic word is not in line with God's word, it's a false prophecy. Example, in the Old Testament, Jeremiah is prophesying and saying, okay, the nation of Israel is going to go through a difficult time. They're going to go through... The Babylonians are going to come, they're going to destroy, right? Destroy the nation of Israel. Now, all of a sudden, some prophets from there came and started saying, no, nothing will happen to Israel. God loves you. God cares for you. You know, there is not going, no, no enemy can attack you, all of that. But then, Jeremiah is saying, don't listen to them. They are false prophecies because they are trying to, say things that will make you feel better now the point is here prophecies yes they are to build us to encourage us but even a, a prophecy can also bring correction into our life let me give you an example right so if i'm praying for somebody and i and the lord says you know this is a sin in his life Maybe he's a secret uh, drinker. He drinks alcohol secretly. Nobody knows. I, I have to spray over that person, and, and and the Lord ministers to me. Now, how do I reveal that word is very important, right? So, I, uh, firstly, I am I have to correct him because if I don't correct him, I'm going against God's word. But the way I do it is very important. Three, two, I have to exhort him. Tell him, hey, it's all right. We have the cross. You have to go back, ask God for forgiveness and help him to get back in step with God. That way, I am doing what is right. I'm, I'm bringing correction, I'm bringing exhortation, and I'm bringing a word to help him take the next step. And so ensure sound doctrine. If you get a prophetic word saying 
you know jesus is coming in 2025 take it and keep it with you don't give it to anybody because when we prophesy we try to avoid saying giving time giving you know exact dates god is beyond all of it right god is beyond all of that yes it could be that god can say by tomorrow this will happen but you should be 100% sure that it is god not your own feeling that's the challenge right then don't base your identity in your gift very important if you must have other people hear about your gift, then you are basing your identity on your gift. This is a sign of insecurity. If people don't call you prophet, they are crying. Oh, they hear call me prophet. They get upset, they get angry, they cry. You know why? Because the identity is based on being a prophet. Doesn't matter. Now, see. We honor others. We call others pastor. But I've never called anyone prophet this and prophet or apostle. No, no, no. I'm not even going to do it also. When I call somebody, I'll either call them by their name, maximum pastor. You'll never find me calling them apostle, most reverend, and all of those things. It's not going to happen. I will not call them. Why? Because the moment they've ask us to say that that's a sign of insecurity i've met many pastors especially when we go to north india many many of them they are very insecure if you don't say prophet they get upset if you don't say apostle they get upset now what is happening they're basing their identity on that gift not basing the identity that they are a child of god that's the, that's our real identity, not the apostle, prophet, all of that. Hello, you think when we go to heaven, Jesus is going to say, "Come, welcome, apostle," whatever? No, Jesus also will call you by name. Then you can't feel bad there. Now, this sign of wanting to be recognized by our identity is a dangerous place. What will happen is, if that is not there then we will crumble we will fail we need to i always go back for example for me personally i don't care if people call me pastor people call me brother people call me paul people call me whatever it doesn't matter to me yes there's a calling people recognize that and call us pastor or whatever but it doesn't matter what what you call me and I think most of us here at APC are like that. Most of our pastors. It doesn't matter to us. Why? Because my identity is not pastor. My identity first is a child of God. I'm washed by the blood of Jesus. And I'm a citizen of heaven. The Holy Spirit is residing in me. And I'm a temple of the Holy Spirit. That's my identity. The calling is a pastor. As a pastor, the, I may have the gift of the prophetic or the word of knowledge. That is all secondary. Don't base your identity on your gift. And especially you, uh, especially those who are young. We have so much that is happening around us in ministry. Don't, it's not going to get us anywhere. Base your identity. Wherever you walk, whatever ministry you do, base it out of your relationship with Jesus then you will see fruit in the ministry, right? Understand the difference between value and function. Your value in God is not based on your gifting. Your gift only defines your function, not your value. I've used this example. I'll use it again. And I stand before the throne, before Jesus. I stand next to Apostle Paul. We both are valued the same. We both are the same in the Lord's eyes. Apostle Paul, Paul Emmanuel, same, same value. But the, the functions 
the rewards are going to be different. Right? Also, Paul did great things for God's kingdom. He had great revelations. The value is still the same. Apostle Paul is a child of God. Paul Emmanuel, child of God. Apostle Paul, who you know, was had great did great ministry. He had the function of an apostle. I may have the function of a pastor, right? So the gifts, the gifts, the rewards are going to be different. The functions are different. Value is the same. So your value in God, just because a person can prophesy or he's standing on the pulpit preaching and teaching, doesn't mean God values that person more. Not really. It's it, that's how we look at it. Remember in the Old Testament, God told Samuel, go and anoint the next king of Israel. Samuel said, oh, these seven brothers are already in the army. All are strong and mighty, and they should. one of them should be the best. God says, no, 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 no. There's one more person. He's looking after sheep. Go and bring that boy. And anoint David as the king of Israel. In Samuel's eyes, these people had value. But God is saying, no, no, no. I have somebody else. Somebody who has a better character, a bigger heart. I've chosen him. Right? So man sees the outward appearance. God sees the heart. Our value is who we are. Six, next point, 16. Guard your motives. Are you promoting your gift or letting people see your gift and make and then make room for it? Are we promoting the gift? I think yes. There's many, many places. Right? The, the gift is promoted. Now, the gift is important. So, for example, a healing evangelist. The gift of healing is very important. Right? We need the gift. We want people to be healed. But this healing evangelist cannot say, OK, come, I'm the healing evangelist. I mean, uh, of course, they're doing that. You know, we have a conference, healing evangelist. This person is coming. That person is coming. That's good. But I'm not promoting the gift. What if healing doesn't happen? Well, we want healing to happen. But what if healing doesn't happen in the conference? Well, if God decides, no, I, uh, I'll do it next time. Example, right? Right now, I promote now in conferences. See, at APC, we have conferences, right? We don't promote the gift. We don't say, "Come, there'll be prophetic word, there'll be word of knowledge." No, we say, "This is the conference. These are the speakers. This is what they'll be talking about." Right? Men's conference. This is the topic. This is the speakers. What happens out of that can be gifts and grace and you know faith, working of miracles, all of that can happen. But these are the two speakers. This is the conference. We're not promoting the gift. We're promoting the word of God. So a true pure word can be given with an impure motive. But the Holy Spirit will not bear witness to it. You see that? A true, pure gift or a true, pure word. God may have given the word, but if it is given to us and we give it to them in an impure motive, the Holy Spirit will not bear witness to, to it. So that means what? Holy Spirit is yeah, just going to sit back and say, no, your motive is not right. So I'm not going to bear witness to this. We can prophesy the whole day. The Holy Spirit can sit the whole day doing nothing. So we got to be careful. Is my motives right? Because if the Holy Spirit does not bear witness, then it's not going to bless people. It will not give life. There's no fruit. There's no reward. Now Everyone may clap. Everyone may say, good job. Oh, beautiful. We had a best conference. Holy Spirit will say nothing. You only wasted money. 
because the Holy Spirit does not bear witness to it. It's not going to bless people. We know that people are blessed only when we do things in the right motive. Our motivation should be right. Guard our motives. Why am I doing what I'm doing? Is this word going to help the person? I want to see that person growing in the Lord. I want to see him get better at what he or she is doing. I, I pray that this prophetic word will minister to them and they will change their ways and they will learn from what God is speaking to them. If that's my motive, then it will bear witness. How do I know when a word is bearing witness or not bearing witness? When I see that when a person, you know, a prophetic word is given, it can only touch the emotions. When it touches the emotions, it will emotions will go away. Flesh speaks to flesh. Spirit speaks to spirit. Get that? Flesh speaks to flesh. Spirit speaks to spirit. If I do something out of a fleshly motive, it will only work for some time. It's going to die out. But if, the, if I'm speaking in the flesh, if in the spirit, it will be in my spirit and it will last for years. There can be a prophetic word. There are prophecies made over my life more than 20 years ago. And I still remember it word for word. There are prophecies made over my life more than 15, 20 years ago. And I even remember what clothes I was wearing that day. I remember where I was standing. I remember who the person was, what he prayed. Why? Because it's deep in the spirit. It's not, not a fleshly thing. I'm not saying that when we don't remember, it's a, you know, that means it's fleshly. No. The, the, the spirit bears witness to the spirit. It is, it is it's a lasting effect. Not like the flesh. Something of a flesh is very easily destroyed. Just passes away. Right? Last one. Do not be hasty to use, sorry, do not be too hasty to use the thus says the Lord or the Lord says as a prefix to your prophecy. Like we talked about this. Don't prophesy and say, thus says the Lord or this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, the God of Jacob and Isaac says. Don't need all of those. See, we need to learn to be simple. There's beauty in simplicity. I don't need to say, thus says the Lord. Thus says the Lord is uh, King James Version. No need. You can be the simple NIV version. Not required to say, thus says the Lord. Thou art spoken to us, Lord. No, no, no. They say simply. Right? Simple words. Simple words to help that other person understand right? so that you can say i sense in my spirit this is what the lord is laying in my heart because again you're giving the prophetic word you're helping them judge it and if it's something that they are you know uh, it, they are resonating with they receive it and they apply it in their lives if they're not it just goes on the moment i say thus says the lord the god of israel in the next two years, you will start your own church. What am I doing? Firstly, I'm saying, thus says the Lord. Two is, I'm giving a time in the next two years. Now, already I've limited, I've, done, I've made two mistakes already. But a better way to say it is, here's what I sense. Here's what the Lord is laying in my heart. I feel that God is preparing you. That in this preparation phase, in the next two years, God is preparing you. And probably after two years, God will use you to launch out your own ministry or your own local church. And what I feel, you can think about it, take this word, pray, and ask the Lord to lead you. I'm closing the chapter there. Because I don't want this person coming to me after two years and saying, you said, thus says the Lord, you said, thou art Lord, and all of it, the God of Israel, Isaac, and Jacob. Nothing happened. And now, the way, again, the usage of words. Words are very powerful. 
and we need to use the right number of words, the right usage of words when giving a prophetic word, right? Then the gifts in personal use. The gifts of the Holy Spirit can be manifested anywhere at any time. The gifts of the Spirit can be manifested in your home, in your schools, colleges, and while ministering to people. Releasing the gifts in small group and corporate settings. Now, in Bible college, in church, it's kind of easy. But what about, you know, in corporate settings? Small groups, again, cell groups, kind of easy, right? So let's just look at a few points here. Use the gifts for edification, not for destruction or condemnation. The gifts are given to edify the body of Christ. What does it mean to edify? To build the body of Christ, not for destruction. Everywhere in the Old Testament, when the prophetic word was given, yes, there were words of, uh, you know, uh, of, of uh, destruction that's going to come, but it's always followed up with words of exhortation. Example, in the book of Isaiah, the first 39 odd chapters is only God rebuking the people of Israel, uh, you know, uh, saying, you know, you do this, you do this, you know, prophetic words of, uh, you know, destruction and chaos and sin and all of it. Then for the next few chapters, it's only words of edification, words of uh, you know, confidence, words of strength, words of faith. It's a powerful book, the book of Isaiah. It's a perfect example that, you know, correction is required. Edification is, you know, the prophetic word can, ends with an edification or an encouragement. Same thing with Jeremiah. Think of this, Jeremiah's writing, Saying, you know, the Babylonians are going to come. They're going to destroy us. Um, you know, you people, as uh, the nation of Israel, you're living in sin. This is what's... And then we come into Jeremiah 28, Jeremiah 29. He says, I, ha I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you. Plans to give you a good hope, good future. Now, the, pro the, the siege has not yet happened. The Babylonians and have not yet come and defeated the Israelites. But he's saying, I know the plans I have for you. In all of this. You will be defeated, but I know what plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you. Plans to give you a good hope, good future. Prophetic words are always given to edify and encourage. Secondly, when, it, when, it, when it's a small group, cell group setting, uh, let everyone pass, participate. Now, this is only possible in cell groups, right? Let everyone participate. Give people opportunity. Encourage people. Now, there will be times people come up to you and say, hey, how did you prophesy? What, what happened to you? What was your mind saying? What was your spirit saying? Uh, how did you know that this is a prophetic word? Or was it not your own thinking? So that's where it gives you a, a teaching moment. right? You begin to minister to them. You teach them. Uh, and how, whatever you learn, you, you apply it and you teach the, the others. Uh, right? And then you follow instructions. So remember all of the instructions that we learned while releasing the prophetic word. Uh, encourage, don't, uh, don't, don't condemn people. Help them to grow. Uh, give a, the prophetic word with the pure motives. Many, many uh, you know, instructions that we have. Fourthly, allow yourself to be judged and corrected. Similarly, if someone makes a mistake, correct and love. This is important. Allow yourself to be judged and corrected. So in the prophetic, remember that we are not perfect. As human beings, we are not perfect. We are all bound to make mistakes. If you read the scriptures, great men and women of God made mistakes. Moses knew that he was going to bring the people out of Egypt. The people of Israel out of Egypt, he made a mistake. He killed the Egyptian. God made a covenant with Abraham, said, I will make your name great. I will make your descendants great. He was waiting, waiting. Nothing happened. He went and slept with Hagar. He made a mistake. Jonah made a mistake. Everyone makes mistakes. Nobody is perfect. In the New Testament, 
Peter made a mistake. Many of us, we all make mistakes. So remember, none of us are perfect. We are striving for perfection. We want to become like Jesus. But when times of especially when we are ministering in the gifts, whether it's prophetic or word of knowledge, during these times, allow yourself to be judged. Ask them, now you're giving a prophetic word. Do you feel that, you know, for example, you've prophesied over somebody and said, you know, I feel that you're going to start a church in two years. Ask them, what do you feel about it? Is it something that you resonate with? Now, they may say, no, no I don't feel it at all. So then you go back. And you say, but was that me? Or was it something that I heard wrong or something that I sensed wrong? Please teach me. Be teachable. Sign of a greatest teacher is that he is teachable. Be willing to be corrected. Right? So there'll be times, you know, people will correct you. They can be senior leaders, senior pastors, senior people who are you know, senior to you in the ministry, every time they'll be corrected. Be willing to be corrected. In the prophetic, while releasing a prophetic word, people may correct you and say, no, this is not something that I uh, I want you to speak out. Now they may say, uh, you know, this is very sensitive. Who told you to speak this out in public? Right. So you apologize. Hey, hey I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done that. Right. The problem is, as ministers, we keep prophesying, doing all of this, and we we think too big of ourselves. So we don't want to apologize. No, that's the wrong place to be in. Be willing, be humble enough to be corrected, to be judged, and to correct it. Judged in the sense the prophetic word is judged. And maybe at times the prophetic word is also corrected. If but if someone makes a mistake. You also can correct in love. Right. So as a pastoral team, we're open, right? You know, sometimes we share on Sundays in church and um, right, we uh, we ask, give us feedback, tell us where we didn't do well and how to improve. That's for feedback. And then when we ask for feedback, we also give feedback. So the pe person who's receiving feedback is open to take correction because they know that even I'm in a place to take correction. It's not like I know everything. Know it all attitude. No, no, no. Never come to that place. Right? Come to a place of saying, God, I'm still learning. I'm still growing. If I have to be corrected. If I have to be judged in certain things that I'm doing, God, you do it. How did, uh, you know, think of this. David is the king of Israel. King of Israel, and Nathan, this prophet, goes, corrects him, says, This is what you have done wrong. You know what David could have done? Number one, he could have said, Nathan, you see those army guys there? Go with them, and they're going to kill you. In the next, you can never speak to a king like that. Or he could have said, Nathan, this is your last day in the nation of Israel. Go. You're, you should be out of this country. Better run for your life. No. David put on sackcloth and ashes and he asked God for forgiveness. He said, Lord, I've done something wrong. Thank you for correcting my mistake. But have mercy on me. Right, that's the right place to be in. Right. Also, while releasing the gifts, promote peace and maintain order. And we see this uh, quite often the word order. Right, prophetic words, especially uh, church in Corinthians, was in a place of disorder. They say we maintain peace, we maintain order. Right, so there's peace among the believers, those who are in you know serving together or in ministry, the local church in a conference. There's there's peace. There's also order. Right? Now, yes, there are times. I'm not denying the fact that there was there's going to be a oh, powerful anointing of the Holy Spirit falling on people and we may fall and be slain in the spirit and speak in tongues and all of it. All of that is true. There are times we've seen it in revivals. It's happened. Um, 
God works in those ways. So those are ways that we can, you know, put aside. Right? We know, okay, we have no control over that. But in times when we have control, uh, we promote peace, we maintain order. The way we prophesy, the way we minister the gifts, gifts of healing, word of knowledge, do it, it, do it in an orderly manner so that Christ is glorified. Right? So we'll stop here. Uh, so what we'll do is for the next hour, uh, just uh, have I want you to do this. We we'll go into breakout sessions, um, maybe three or four people in each team. Uh, those who are online, our online students, if you'd like to, you can also get into. Maybe you can just get on to, on a call or something. Uh, but get into groups. I know you do this in the supernatural hour as well. But get into groups and just pray over each other. And if there's a prophetic word, release the prophetic word. Now, here's what I want you to do. As you're praying, if you get a vision or a dream or something that God is giving you, write that down. Write it down. right? And those who are receiving the prophetic word, maybe you can write it down and keep it. The Bible says in Malachi, write down the revelations. Inscribe them. Write them. So you write down that, right? So you spend time together, uh, a few, you know, maybe probably about uh, 15 minutes to 20 minutes. Uh, just get together in groups in your classrooms, uh, pray for each other. And then after that, you give the prophetic word, make a note of it. Then maybe you can spend the rest of the time just studying and reading. What we'll do is for when we meet again, we'll pick up from chapter 11. Uh, that would be next Friday. We'll pick up from chapter 11 and uh, we'll look at the anointing and ministering in the power of the Spirit. So please use this next hour in a fruitful way. Spend time together. Make groups of maybe three or four. Pray for each other. Ask God for a prophetic word. Write it down. And after you've completed that, spend the rest of the time just maybe going through your notes, reading, and then we'll meet next Friday. Um, in person so that we can complete chapter 11 and 12 as well. Is that okay? Thumbs up will do. All right. Okay, let's just close in prayer, right? Father, we want to thank you so much for this time. Thank you for teaching us, Lord. Lord, even as we desire for more of the prophetic, more of your Holy Spirit, Lord, we pray that you will teach us you will lead us, you will guide us, Lord. Even as we spend the next few minutes, maybe 15 or 20 minutes, just praying. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you'll speak a prophetic word into each of our lives, that God, words of encouragement, words of direction, words of exhortation uh, that we can apply in our lives, that God. And teach us, Lord, teach us to be more sensitive to your Holy Spirit. We commit each one of us into your hands, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, all right. Have a great week ahead. Uh, and I'll see you next Friday. God bless you all.